Uh, right now, though, let's catch up with the all-important weather wherever you are in the country. Let's return to Carol Kirkwood. Hi again, Carol. Hi, Jane. We've been so lucky with the weather here in Mortlake. It's cloudy, but it's dry, and everybody has made such an effort. Look at Louis. Oh, you're a tired wee man. He's seven months old. He's come dressed in his crown, his cravat, looking lovely with his mum, Annabelle. Thank you so much for, for coming along, Annabelle. And the party really is getting going now. And the weather couldn't be kinder for most. It's quite a cloudy start to the day. If we take a look around the country, well, the clouds are a little bit thicker in Butte this morning, so you might just see some drizzle first thing, but it will brighten up, light winds, good for paddle boarding later on. In Mortlake and Windsor, the sun will come out this afternoon, and moving north into Northampton, a very similar story, cloudy, but it will brighten up, and in Morecambe, it's going to be a sunny afternoon as well when the cloud breaks. But in any skilling, what you might just find is later, we'll see a shower come in, and then we've got rain coming in this evening, so you might want to take your party undercover if it's still going. As we push up into Greenock and also into West Ray, what you'll find is could well be a shower. There'll be limited brightness. Temperatures in West are getting up to about 11 degrees, but today could actually be the warmest day of this year so far. We're looking at 21 degrees as our top temperature, maybe 22. And if you're going to the concert in Windsor tonight, it should also stay dry. And it will be pleasantly mild into the evening as well. Now you might be able to see some of the smoke coming across. But this is the barbecue. We're all going to be smelling of sausages and burgers. But I don't know what it's like for you are in Morecambe Tina. It should be dry, it should be sunny this afternoon. So fingers crossed. Yeah, we're keeping everything crossed here. The sun is peeking out now from behind the clouds, so hopefully it will stay dry and sunny. And as you can see in Morecambe, party's well underway. The bunting's out, the guests are here, the picnic tables have been laid. Are you having a nice time? We're having a wonderful time, really nice time. What brings you here? Because of the street party. It's yeah. one that is beautiful today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Celebrate the kings. And to celebrate the kings. kings. And you have quiche. We have quiche. quiche. Yes. yes, and you have some more food hidden yeah. under that table yes. in a hamper. Yes, <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, there are crafts going on over here as well. Oh, your crown looks lovely. Did you make that yourself? <laughs> and what's that? What have you painted? The beach. The beach. Lovely, I'll let you carry on. Uh, and there's a huge feast over here. Are you having a good time? We are. Great, thank you. So who did the baking, the food preparation? Erin, you, well done. And you've got a great tiara too. Um, are events like this important bring, when it comes to bringing the community together? Very much so, yes. It, it, yeah. it brings everybody from all work, walks of life and, and all statuses. And, it's just great, isn't it? It's great fun. Yeah, food, drink, what's not to love? Cake? Yes. <laughs> Sandwiches. Uh, have you been to a party like this before? Uh, I have, but not here. But um, no, last year, Tom helped organise one. Yeah, one of my house. It wasn't quite as big as this. No, no. not quite 500 tables. Yeah. <laughs> and what's so special about Morecambe? Well, I've not been here before, but it's absolutely beautiful. And the sun's out, and the sea, it's lovely. Really lovely. Well, these giant street parties have become something of a tradition in Morecambe last year. Uh, for the Queen's uh, Platinum Jubilee, there were 500 tables. That was breaking. They broke the record for the longest street party in the UK. They are hoping to smash that record this year with more than 500 tables. We mentioned earlier, 10,000 people we think are going to be here. Uh, we're also joined by John Waits, Bake Off winner and Strictly Runner Up. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. And you come with quiche. I've come with. This is the coronation quiche, and it really is not a quiche fit for a king. I don't think. But we're going to talk about that, aren't we? We are going to talk about that. We'll be talking uh, all things food, including coronation quiches. Some may say controversial. But first, why has the street party become such a fixture here in Morecambe? I spent the day with those getting ready for this record-breaking event. With its vast bay and the largest expanse of sand in the UK, this town has taken His Majesty's coronation celebrations to its heart. Dice and Sienna from nearby Stanley's community centre are beachcombing the sands, digging for decorations for their coronation crowns. What are you looking for to materials wise for your crown? I'm looking for shells. Okay. And possibly some pebbles, but I'm not too sure. 
And what is it about foraging that you that you love? The adventure of it, where you don't know what you could find. Oh, what are you writing in the sand? Let's have a look. King Charles. What kind of crown do you think King Charles would like to wear? A gemmed one. And any words of advice for the new king? Good luck, King Charles. Hope you don't mess it up. <laughs> Someone who spent many years on the beach with his father, grandfather and great-grandfather is local royalty and king of the Morecambe Bay Sands, fisherman Michael Wilson. Royally appointed in a role that dates back to the 1500s, it's Michael's job to guide people safely across these treacherous sands when the tide is low. It was a great honour to be asked, shall we say, because it's such an historic role. Henry VIII appointed these guides to guide the, the goods and people across the bay. Like you? Like me now. So my job is to guide you around them places and not get people stuck, hopefully. And I suppose you are probably one of very few guides in the history of the Guides of the Sands that has been both Queen and King's guide. Yeah, I, I, I've never really looked into the history. I, I, I might be the only one. You could yeah, be. Yeah, it could be, yeah. How does that feel? Quite amazing, really, yeah, yeah. And as King's Guide, it may fall to you at some point to take the King across these sands. Yeah, you never know. Watch this face. <laughs> yeah. da, da, da. Carrie Matthews is one of the key organisers of today's street party. In your smile. We could not come to Morecambe and not come and see the Eric Morecambe statue. <laughs> yes. His mum and dad lived down the road and uh, the Queen came to unveil the statue. That was her last visit to Morecambe. For the Queen's Jubilee, and Morecambe put on the longest street party in the UK. What are you doing this time? We're doing bigger and better, of course. So twice the length, twice the size, twice the fun, twice the people. <laughs> it brings hope. It brings hope and it brings life. You know, and, and, and that's what we celebrate here. We celebrate our bay and we celebrate the life we have here. So you saw Sienna there searching for jewels to decorate her crown. She's with me now. What a lovely crown. How did you find the process of making it? And this is your little sister Annie, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You've had really good fun, haven't you, making the crown? Yeah. And getting ready for the tea party. You've brought yeah. all the family down, haven't you, today? Yeah. <laughs> well, not all of it. Some of the, some of the family. Some of it. Yeah, the important members. Um, and, Robin, you are you run Stanley's Community yeah. Centre and you're responsible for, for all of this. Yep, um, yeah. Why is it so important to, to get children involved and, and get them down to the beach? We've got such a great sense of community in the West End of Morecambe where our charity is based. Um, but we see every year there's always a young person who's never actually been to the beach, which, which is ridiculous considering how close. We bring them down to the beach, we run sports days and all sorts of things as part of the centre okay. activities. Yeah, and what's do. your role in, at Stanley's? Oh, I'm a trustee at Stanley's. OK. And it's a fantastic place. Like, it's helped me out so much. I just wanted to get involved and give back to the community, really. How much of a difference does it make to, to Morecambe having an event like this, breaking the record for the longest street party in the UK, everyone coming together? Oh, it's just a fantastic feeling. It really is just to get part, to, to be involved, really. You clearly uh, took the brief seriously. Great crown. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and did you follow the coronation yesterday? Yeah, I was watching it on TV at home. What did you make of it? Um, it was amazing it's to see all them people get together to renounce the, ki the new king. OK, uh, and we've got to say hello to Sienna and Annie's mum. Oh, you must be very proud. Very, very proud. Proud um, to be a proud mum, but to be um, associated with Stanley's, that is, is such an incredible charity that helps the community. Brilliant. Well, community. Th thank you for, thank for coming you. to show us your, your crown designs um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Have you, are you familiar with foraging? Oh, well, I've been foraging for some tarragon for this quiche. <laughs> All the supermarkets were sold out of tarragon because there's tarragon in this. We'll it's talk one of the about key ingredients. We yeah. will. It doesn't we will. belong in a quiche, but and come on. 
onto that. Isn't this amazing? What I love about this is that sense of community. As you said, you know, it doesn't matter if you're completely on board with the royal family or not. What people have done is come out in masses today to celebrate this historic moment. And you can feel it, can't you, in the air? You know, it's, it's a really rare thing to experience something as exciting and as celebratory as this. I, I used to come to Morecambe when I was a little lad to the, um, the fairground, which is now gone, and it was busy like this. But it kind of went away, that business, that excitement. But to see it here today, it's just brilliant, isn't it? It absolutely is, and there, there are parties like this going on all over the UK today. Don't forget, we want to hear from you too, so please do send us your photos of your street parties, uh, whether they are underway or you're getting ready for them. You can email us at haveyoursay at bbc.co.uk. Uh, send us your photos via our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash news, and we will see the best of them at the end of the programme. Um, well, let's Show us head... your quiche. Yes, exactly. Show us your quiche. Show us your quiche. <laughs> Show us your quiche. <laughs> let's head back to Mortlake. John, we've got crowns made from seashells here. We've got a, we've got a quiche. We have many quiches. What's happening where you are in South West London? We've got a barbecue, Tina. Jim's on the barbecue. Are you feeling the pressure? I am, indeed, yeah. It's, it's really hot. <laughs> it's really hot. You're going to be changing that to 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. You don't realise that. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Well done. This is great Thanks, in the John. gardens. The people here are out in force for this street party. Sarah and Sarah are two of the organisers. Good afternoon Hello. and thank you for having us. Hello. What a turnout. I mean, you do this often, yeah? Very often, yeah. A great, great turnout, as ever, from the Grosvenor Grid, as we like to call it. Um, everyone turns up, they bring something to share, to drink, to eat, um, have fun. We even do it on Christmas Day. Do you? Yeah, Regularly? We step, we step out every Christmas Day and have a drink with all of our neighbours, friends, rain family. Or shine. We step out and do this. There'll Amazing. be people watching the telly this lunchtime who are seeing all these celebrations around the country who think, oh, my neighbourhood doesn't do that kind of thing and isn't celebrating the coronation in that way. What, what do you think is different? What's special about here? I don't think there's anything special about here. I think in our experience, generally, everybody wants to come out and do this. They want to get together. They welcome the opportunity. What I think it needs is very often someone to make that first move and to say, come on, everybody, let's get together. Let's do this. And actually, then you find that everyone will willingly follow on and get involved. Because I was wondering how organised this is, because it looks like phenomenal. Like, literally, about half eleven, everything came out of the houses. Every kind of food, all the booze, all the drink, the cakes. There's been, there's been quite a lot of messages. Um, <laughs> a lot of instruction about, you know, someone bring a cake, bring some food. Uh, but we just keep reminding people, come out, uh, bring your things, don't make it complicated, but just make sure you come out and have fun and talk to your neighbours. And is that what this is really about? It's OK, it's really Coronation about. Weekend. It's Coronation but... Weekend, but it could be any... We, we do it quite regularly, regardless. We do. We would do a big lunch every weekend, I think, if we could in our street. Yeah. I'm going to move here. It sounds a brilliant place to live. Do you know what? I've got somebody over here we need to talk to. Mel! <laughs> Look who's here. Mel Gintroch, how are you? I was talking to Margot. Oh. She's in a gold dress. Margot she's three looks and a half. Fantastic. I know. I she's got the same Carol Kirkwood style going I on know. with the sequins. She... Hi, Margot! <laughs> she's amazing. She's made her own hair. The Sarahs. The yeah. two Sarahs. They're trying to make Sarah's. our life really easy. Yeah. Call I mean. everybody Sarah. <laughs> Most of the people here are called Sarah. <laughs> so Sarah. So you are uh, part, Mel, or yes. you can be Sarah if you like. Yes. You're part of the Big Lunch, ambassador Absolutely. for the Big Lunch, which sort of thinks about this in a kind of bigger, broader, yeah. long-term scale. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I feel very honoured to be here, by the way. Thank you so much for letting very me welcome. come. You're more than welcome. Here. And letting me loose on the barbecue, which I am heading towards <laughs> very, very properly. You won't get those tongs off, Jim. No. The, um, the big lunch actually happens anyway, whether there's a coronation or a royal event or not. Happens all the time, once a year, usually at the beginning of June. This is obviously a very special big lunch because it coincides with the coronation. And it's basically about, as you've done so magnificently, Sarah's, uh, gets communities together, gets streets together, gets people together with their neighbours. And it doesn't have to be a huge, amazing bells and whistles big lunch that we have here. You can literally meet up with a friend with a scotch egg and a little... And a cup of tea. And a snifter, I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. or a cup of tea, uh, on, your, on your driveway. So it's a lovely, That's lovely... That's not a cup of tea. This is my own private... Don't look in there, Sarah. Don't look in there. <laughs> 
Steve, it's so nice to be here, though. It's about community, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. All Absolutely. Of this. And, and I think yesterday, that was the big message that I got. It's about small into big, if that makes any sense. Start small and then the big... I don't know what I'm saying, but anyway, cheers. Cheers. Love cheers. It's like cup of tea. It's the cup of tea. <laughs> cheers with a cup of tea. Cheers. Thank yeah, you all so much. Have a you. lovely Thank day. You. Do you know what? We're going to go for okay, We're starting with barbecue. Sorry, my friend. Um, you've got to see this stuff over here because they've asked people to bring cakes out onto the table. Layla is here. How are you? Welcome to my cake kingdom. Please come in. Food <laughs> critic from MasterChef Layla Kazim, and you're going to be judging some of these later. I um, am. They're stunning, aren't they? I have been appointed uh, chief taster of the cakes this afternoon, That's which a I'm gig. very much happy to do. I mean, the detail on some of these are incredible. If we come over to this one, we actually, I believe, have a small cake on a cake. We've got little icing sandwiches and hot dogs. We've got Union Jacks. We've got incredible colour things. We've even got King Charles pulling a few faces over here. I mean, I do intend to sample all of these. And I feel like I've got my work cut out. I might need some assistance if anyone is ready. This one here is already stopped. Oh, we are, we are, we are, we are. We are, we are, we are, we are. But there's a lot of cakes to get to. They look incredible. Some are kids' cakes, some are adults. I honestly can't tell the difference because they're they're beautiful. So I'm uh, I'm as happy as Larry. I'm slightly worried about these tables. Are they going to be able to support all these cakes? I have checked the structural integrity <laughs> and I've been told everything is fine, but they are actually grown under the weight of cakes. And actually, cakes keep coming out. One just came five minutes ago, and we're trying to find space. But uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm quite happy here. I think this was made for me. So uh, I'll let you know how they taste later. Queen of the cakes. Yes. Leila, for now, thank you very much indeed. We'll see you again a little bit later. This has got us thinking about the history of street parties, about the way we in Britain celebrate big occasions. Helena Wilkinson has been going back through the archives. They've been held to celebrate royal weddings. Get me to the church on time. Jubilees and even the occasional coronation. Britain loves a street party. The country needs something like this to get the out of the depression. I think this will do it. It will make them all happy at least for one day. On the Riverside Estate in Colchester, they've been holding street parties going back to Queen Elizabeth's Silver Jubilee in 1977. Come on, gang, let's go! This year, Angie Fairbrother's in charge, and she's not short of help. There we are. Flags. Well, we had two, over 200 last time, didn't we? So, yeah. And I think this time it's like, again, like last, the Jubilee is yeah. a once in a lifetime, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. like, so hopefully people will come yeah. and bring their kids and stuff. Yeah. So, Angie, you are a veteran when it comes to street parties. <laughs> Tell us why. Um, I don't know. We've had them for the last 10 years. I just love the sense of community. I love the fact I grew up on this estate. I remember the Jubilee, the Silver Jubilee, and I love the fact that the whole community got together and everybody knew everybody, and I just wanted to recreate that for the youngsters on the estate now. I want them to have the same happy memories of growing up on this estate that I did. Just like in years gone by, there'll be bunting, ball games, and a big lunch. This is like Christmas, this is. Yeah. The lights are all tangled. These pictures, recently uncovered in Hackney Council's archive, show coronation celebrations in 1953 in London, the capital still recovering from the Second World War. But in fact, street parties date back a lot further. I went to meet Dr George Gross from King's College London, an expert in historical celebrations. So previously people thought that street parties were perhaps something that started in the Victorian era, possibly for the coronation of Queen Victoria in 1838, but we know from early records that they were certainly taking place in Tudor Britain. This is uh, a very early um, impressional drawing of Anne Boleyn's coronation banquet in 1533. In terms of street parties though, what is interesting is we know that there was a huge procession in London going through the city of London and there in Cheapside there's a fountain laid on in the records that states that all the afternoon white wine was flowing one end and the other claret. So I, there was a huge sense of occasion. 
street parties have been going on, as you found out from your research, for centuries, but at the very heart of it, not something that's organised by the state, but by communities. This is not the elite organising this. this. This is at parish level, at local council level. This is not um, state funded. I'll stay here in case you want it tighter. Back in Essex, they're preparing for what might be the last big royal occasion for years. It does look good, doesn't it? After this weekend, Angie and her neighbours are going to have to find another excuse to get the bunting out. Keep going. Eat it. This is James and Felix. Oh, James has that taste. Yeah? How many have you had? Only one. Only one. <laughs> Bracket so far. Felix, you need a cake, my friend. Um, I've had that and three of them. OK, you guys have been scoping the whole thing, this haven't you? amazing. I don't live here. I live in Gilton Avenue. Don't say that too loud. They'll kick you out. <laughs> no, they won't. They're nice here. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Yeah. Look, in breaking news, I found some people who live here who are not called Sarah, which is quite amazing. <laughs> Janet and John, which I love, in its own right. That's lovely to see you. Um, you've been here for how many years? 43. It's quite a place, isn't it? It's absolutely wonderful. Yes, it's a wonderful Absolutely amazing. What, what creates this community spirit? What is it about here? I think that people just knock on doors sometimes. Just have a go. You know, just, if you've got a neighbour, just knock on the door and say hi. You know, come and have a cup of tea or whatever. They're very good and, 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 you know, WhatsApp also helps because, you know, we've got too many apples, could you come and get one? That sort of thing. OK. Now, and do you, do you feel if you needed a hand, if you needed support and help, you get it? Yeah. John fell down the stairs. All I did was knock on two doors. One person came out, helped me get him down and put him on the chair. Oh, that's so great. You doing all right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so far, that British lady. Yeah. Um, you're a bit of a cameraman, aren't you? You've, told me. Right. You've been chronicling these uh, events over, over the decades since, what, since the early 80s. Well, the first party like this we filmed was shortly after we moved in. So it was, it was a Charles and Diana one. It was at 81. And there was a big party like this. And we'd been here a couple of years, since 79. And that, that was an enormously wonderful introduction to the spirit of the area, you know, so we were laughing. I've seen your pictures at the moment. I mean, I think sometimes we think that society has changed an awful lot over the last four decades and that life isn't quite what it used to be and communities aren't as strong maybe as they used to be. In the 40 years you've spent here, has it changed? No, I mean, I, over those years, I, we had a lull at one point. I mean, I was looking around just a minute ago at these kids, and there's always a few faces like this around when they grow up and they move, and there's another lot. And there was well, only a very just discovered Felix this around the corner. It shouldn't really be here. <laughs> We've got a little bit of that going on. <laughs> no, there's always a, a fresh intake of... Uh, small children which we rather like <laughs> yeah yeah it feels like a very mixed community here is, yeah. a lot of people who've moved from all over the country to london uh, from all over the world to this street and yeah and, and that that feeds through into the into the food on the table look we've got some samosas there what have you got your eyes on what are you going to be eating i haven't looked yet <laughs> Yeah, it's true that we have, you just get a wide shot and you don't really quite see it all. But there's a lot of quiches up there, which I'm quite keen on. I love the fact that you're still thinking like a cameraman, aren't you? Getting a wide shot. I'm afraid so. What have you brought to the table? Have you brought any food? Quiches. Quiches? <laughs> Coronation quiches? <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid not. A bit lazy there, I'm afraid we are. I don't think there's any, any harm in that. I mean, it's, uh, it's quite a spread. In fact, the amount of food is depleted enormously in the last few minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Janet and John. Right Lovely uh, to see you. Uh, I think, should we get some sea air? Do you fancy a trip to the beach? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes I think go. that's a good idea. Ashley John Baptiste is imbued in Cornwall, where they're celebrating uh, the coronation this weekend in a slightly wetter way. Hi, Ashley. Hiya, John. Incredible scenes where I am. You've got the sun, swimmers, people in fancy dress hair, imbued in Cornwall. How is everyone feeling? <laughs> I am at Bude Seapool, which really does have a special significance for this local community, where many are gathered this afternoon to mark this coronation 
weekend. Now, of course, across the country, many are having big lunches, but here in Bude, it's all about the big cream tea. Come on. <laughs> um, and I should also say anything could happen at the moment because, John, I'm speaking to you on a paddleboard, which is a first for me, but it's a big pastime here to give you a sense of why we've got a local paddleboard instructor, Rob. Aya, tell me, uh, not, not a big lunch, but paddle boards, why? Well, we just wanted to do something a bit different, so we've decided to go with a big cream tea. Um, so people will be coming out today, having a go on, a pad on the big paddle board, yeah. while they have a cream tea. Why a cream tea? Well, it is a delicacy in Cornwall, is but it? it has to be a way of doing it right. You All right, sure school me, come on, tell me, what do we need to do? So, in Cornwall, there's only one way to make your cream tea. Uh -huh. It is jam first. Got you, jam first. Always. Well, I will take that home back to London with me. Um, we also have with us um, Georgina, who is part of a Hello. sea shanty singing group. I mean, tell me about how you're partaking in this afternoon. Well, it's a great honour to be here to celebrate the coronation of King Charles. And in order to do that, we're going to do, be making a little bit of music, oh. a bit different to the music that there was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Ours are going to be Songs of the Sea. Um, because we are a sea shanty group. We've been together just for four weeks and we're an all-female group wow. and we're called the Barrel Seagulls, named after the barrel um, that was used to guide the boats into harbour. Um, yeah. So we're really, really looking forward to making some music to celebrate oh, Charles's lovely. coronation. So you've been together for four weeks and you're already singing on live telly for BBC One. No yeah. pressure. But I suppose, you know, to, to be able to celebrate the coronation in such a unique way must be special to you. Absolutely. It's a real privilege for all of us and we feel very honoured to be able to do this. So oh. thank you for inviting us. We also have Paul, who oversees the group that looks after this pool. I mean... You know, this pool really does bring the community together for big events, doesn't it? It does. As you can see here, everybody's turned up. Uh, we're well supported by the local businesses and people. Mm -hmm. uh, a vital part of the Bude holiday scene uh, and uh, much loved by thousands. Yeah, well, I can see why. And I understand, and this is astonishing, that this isn't your first coronation in this water, is it? No, luckily, in 53, I moved into Bude in 1952. And in the summer of 1953, because there was no television, I was out here playing in the sea pool. So to be here for His Majesty the King's coronation really must be, I suppose, a full circle moment for you. A full circle moment and delighted to represent the sea pool and uh, everybody who's involved with it and uh, an honour to represent Prince Charles as well. So you've been here for 70 years yep. thereabouts. I mean, to see the community, the sense of excitement at the moment, to see everyone gathering, what does it mean to you? Well, I, I'm just um, delighted because the county, in their wisdom, was going to knock it down 10 years ago. Wow. So we managed to preserve it and maintain it and enhance it. So we're working hard to keep it free for everybody who's, who comes to Butte. And they love it. And I, look, on, on the scones, how important is the jam first? Someone oh, tell me. Oh, in Devon, it's the other way around. Is it? So it's a border thing. As soon as you cross the border, they'll go jam on top of cream. You know, Fantastic. We just don't take that. So I can't get it wrong, jam first. Well, look, Tina, as uh, this boy from South London, as his first ever scone in Cornwall, we've got one more treat for you. What? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early mm. in the morning. Ashley, thank you so much. We'll be back in Bude a little bit later. Party is in a full flow in Morecambe, as you can see. <laughs> And they are all, well, not all here, but many are here because of the coronation of King Charles III and Queen Camilla, which, of course, took place at Westminster Abbey. And it was the UK's first coronation in 70 years. So we wanted to find out what people make of the momentous events of yesterday. And I'm joined by Kerry, Taylor, Chloe and family. Welcome. Thank you. Great effort with, with the outfits. As always, yeah. <laughs> um, how would you sum up yesterday? Did you watch? I watched the whole thing, yes. Um, I'm very patriotic, so I will always watch something to do with the royals um, every time, yeah. You can tell so, you're patriotic. Oh, yes. I made this for work, so, yeah. yeah. Highlights for you? Highlights, um, when they were on the balcony, 
um, watching everybody walk, everything, just the whole thing. Everything was a highlight for me. I loved it. I was glued. We've got to ask, though, who was the best dressed, do you think? Oh, um, I'm a very big fan of Kate Middleton, so I think she was the best dressed. Yeah. But then again, I loved everything that Charles was wearing, too. It looks all right. A bit of bling. <laughs> I like a bit of bling. It looks so. all right. Yeah. It looks so bad. Yeah. <laughs> what memories uh, will you take away from, from the weekend? Um, well, as a family gathering, you know, it's just... I mean, my kids watched it. I made, I made them watch it. <laughs> I made them watch it. Because yeah. it's such a momentous thing in history, so... You know, we don't know when you're going to see it again, so... Yeah. yeah. What What did you make of it? Of the coronation? What did you think? Did you like, did you like it? it or not? Was it good? Good. 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 <laughs> good. Yeah, one, one word review, it was good. Uh, that's fine. Uh, did you watch? No, I, I slept I slept through it. OK. Uh, you wanted to talk about food, didn't you? Well, I've seen... Have you made these, Chloe? These? I have what the are these? meringues, yeah. Um, so I've just made meringues with normal egg whites, so nothing, nothing vegan or anything yeah. like that. And then with sweetened whipped cream, so... Yeah. Can I try sure. one? Of course you can, yeah. Go in. Are, you a clean, are you a clean chef? Yes, I am. Fingernails yeah. clean? Fingernails are clean, yes. Got, got clean fingernails. We're good to go, OK. Right, let's get the verdict. Let's have the verdict, all right. John, oh, oh. that does look delicious. Ten out of ten. Yay! <laughs> well, millions of people from all over the world watched the King's coronation yesterday. For many, it was the first coronation they had ever seen, like many of us here. But others have memories of the last coronation in the UK, that of Queen Elizabeth II on the 2nd of June 1953. And it was groundbreaking. The first ever to be televised, watched by 27 million people in the UK, millions more around the world. And oh, with Evans is in Cowbridge in South Wales. And Owen, you are taking a trip down memory lane, aren't you? Oh, Tina, absolutely darling. Welcome to Cowbridge, everyone. Celebrations are plenty here today. Uh, so we're here in the field in the middle of town. Uh, lots of people turning up now enjoying some live music, chatting a bit about that later on. And also a great parade through the town led by some tractors earlier. And uh, if you ever come to Cowbridge, by the way, a great place to pick up a nice brooch yet. But yes, memories of 53. For many people, this wasn't the first co um, coronation in the memory, of course. And I've got three friends joining me here, Francis, Rowena and Geoffrey. Francis, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, thinking back to 1953, you lived in Southern Down. Yes. What do you remember of then? Well, I remember I had a day off work. I worked in the bank for um, five and a half days of a week then. So I had a day off. We had the only television in the village. We lived at the end of the village in a, in a farmhouse. We invited the great and the good in. And my <laughs> sister and I spent most of our time supplying them with... Uh, Tea, coffee and Welsh cakes. Oh, I love a Welsh cake. That sounds <laughs> gorgeous. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to jump around here to Rowena. Hello, Rowena. Hello. Can we look at the nails? Look at the nails. <laughs> gorgeous, those. Very on brand, very on brand. Um, Rowena, you used to have a penchant for fancy dress, is that right? Well, to be honest, it was my parents, because I was a little girl of five years old. Uh, we lived in uh, South Stifford near Grays in Essex, and I was dressed up as Britannia, like on the old ah. penny coin. Mm -hmm. um, I had a beautiful white tunic and a cape, but the pièce de résistance was the helmet that my dad had made out of cornflake packets <laughs> with the old red and green colours inside. He painted it gold and I had a trident made out of a broomstick wow. and three bits of card on the top and a circular Union Jack, Union flag. Do you still have the outfit? Sadly, no. I don't oh, think it would fit, no. <laughs> well, Francis and Rowena were in the UK at the time. I'm joined now by Geoffrey. Hello, Geoffrey. Hello. Um, you were in Germany with the RAF, weren't yes, you? Yes, I was, yes. What do you remember of it? Well, well, I was attached to the RAF regiment, the Rock Apes. I was a medic. And so we had to be on duty with them on the airfield before they fired a 21-gun salute make sure nobody got injured or anything like that. And um, afterwards, as far as I can remember, we then were treated to lunch in the airman's mess with the officers waiting on us as they always do on Christmas Day. And then the rest of the day, we had the day off, and I listened to the broadcast from BBC via American Forces Network. Right, excellent. Yes. Geoffrey, thank you so much for chatting to us okay, today. OK, right out. Uh, now, the four of us are going to head over to the stage very shortly to enjoy some entertainment. Apparently, Elvis is here. Haven't seen Elvis yet. Hope he's got a good sturdy boot on, cos uh, it's a bit muddy underfoot. So, from us here in Cowbridge, John, over to you.
You've got Elvis, Owain. We've got a very special guest as well. I'm delighted to say that here at Grosvenor Gardens in Mortlake in South London, only the king. Speechless, he is. Utterly speechless by the turnout here and the response across the country over the last 24 hours or so. Welcome back to London. God, we're clocking up the miles, aren't we, this lunchtime? Zipping all over the UK and there's lots more to come here on BBC One today. Hello, guys. Hi. You all right? Scooting around? Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having us. I want to uh, see a friend of mine I've got here. Can we have a look at Chile? Chile is... Oh. <laughs> Thankfully not too chilly. Hey, chilly, I love your, your neckerchief. <laughs> okay, all right. How are you guys doing? Yeah, really good. We're having a really lovely time. Yeah? Oh, yeah, great celebration. Yes, what have you brought for the table? What well, have you managed to get I, from the table? Well, <laughs> I made some um, cream scones and some sausage rolls and cupcakes. There are three left there. Is yours here, are they? Yep, they're mine, yep. <laughs> They look fantastic. I'm fascinated to know on, on, the, uh, on the cakes and scones, is it jam first or cream first? Well, we had that question this morning. Should I? Uh, cream then jam. Well, I know it depends where you come from. You've just divided the nation. Just when we were all coming together, <laughs> you've only gone and done it now. Well, we were going to do half half, but I'll blame it on Shane. <laughs> What, is it, what does it mean to you this weekend? Because uh, people are saying it's it's about the coronation, but somebody just said to me it's about more than that. Yeah, it is. And we've lived in this road for 32 years, and over time it's been a celebration, a jubilee. The road has always pulled out stops, and we've celebrated like this, and it's just a lovely way of getting to know everybody. All the family here this weekend? Yeah. Including Chile. Including Chile. <laughs> lovely. Well, I tell you what, we can go from your street to Downing Street now, because we've got some pictures. The Prime Minister and his wife are hosting a street party there at number 10 this lunchtime, just to add some more miles to the clock of uh, the BBC coverage of where we're going around. Uh, trestle tables, jelly and blancmange, uh, charity workers, scouts, representatives from across the country outside that famous number 10 front door this lunchtime, uh, going to be joined by politicians, but also opening it up to the people, which is what this whole lunchtime celebration is all about. The UK celebrating the coronation and, as the people here were just saying, much more about community as well. And we can go now to a community hall in North Northampton because Nicky Fox is trying to get a free lunch there. Right, Nicky? Yeah, I am, John. I am. I am in Northampton. Woo! We warm them up. We warm them up. The party is just getting started. The sun is coming out. We've got music, face painting. I'm already on my third meal of the day. But I've not just come here to eat food. No, 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 no. I've come to meet a phenomenal woman, Neelam Agarwal Singh. Now, she is, well, she's bound me from saying single-handedly responsible. She's very modest. But she is responsible for bringing the Indian and Hindu communities together through her organisation. But she's so much more than that. Aren't you, Neela? Hi, Nikki. Hello, Welcome to IHW uh, Coronation Picnic. We're delighted to have you guys here, BBC One. Well, you're and very much about all faiths coming together, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Neela, and that's what you're about, isn't very it? Very much, because uh, it's important for everybody to come together on the humanity ground and work together as one human race, because it's very important. There is so much more we have in common than differences. Yeah. And it's very important for everybody to be coming together and celebrate such a momentous occasion. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's uh, in my lifetime, it's the first time. And you look uh, wonderful. You're dressed for it as well, aren't you, Nina? Thank you. And thank you were you. telling me on the phone, this community centre that you can probably see behind me, I mean, you have all sorts going on here, don't you? I mean, you have bonsai, Scottish dancing, you do uh, railway groups, yes, don't you? Uh, what we, have I missed, Nina? Well, there is a lot goes on. So there is the railway club, Scottish dancing, I think you said, the bonsai group. We, as a community, most of our activities take place here. So like the Friday uh, fun group, which is every Friday, the ladies group, the ladies group, the men's group, and uh, then there is the Bharatnatyam dance classes where young people come, there's the youth group, 
which meets every Friday and Sunday here. Uh, so a lot goes on as a community. We do lots of monthly activities, yeah. weekly, fortnightly. We do absolutely. Well, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> and, and you celebrated the Jubilee here as well, didn't you? We it was did another last party. Year. Yeah, last year, uh, Platinum Jubilee. It was very well attended and a lot of people dressed in uh, uh, purple uh, uh, as part of the Jubilee colour. And I do want to mention uh, the Eden Project, yes. uh, the big lunch. So we started back in 2012 through Eden Project yeah. uh, as big lunches, which has become an annual event for us. In uh, 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 June, every year, we organize a big lunch, uh, uh, which is turned into a barbecue picnic uh, for us. And no, not a single jubilee we as a community have missed. Uh, because it's important for us all to come together and join in such a amazing uh, celebration where we have a new king and uh, it's amazing. And I don't want to embarrass you, uh, Neil, I know you're very modest, but you're an MBE, aren't you? Yes, and I was uh, delighted that my MBE uh, was presented to me. Uh, who is now king, but it was Prince Charles at the time. Yes. So I received my MB from Prince Charles, who is now our king. Your family yes. must have been so proud as well as you. Like, it was a, it was a very proud moment. My daughter was living in Cayman Island, one of them at the time, and she flew in just to go with me to Buckingham Palace to receive my MB. So uh, something I never ever dreamed that uh, I will be receiving such an honor. It made me feel so humble to be thought of in that way. Listen, we've got some food here. Yes. Should we have a little bite? Please, you little... must try some. Let's have... Because there is some samosas. Yeah. It's all vegetarian. We've got uh, lovely onion bhaji. Oh, yeah. Yes. More food, more food. <laughs> I love it. And we've got some cakes. And some cakes. Absolutely. But we're Jubilee now going to go uh, going back to London now to meet the loveliest woman I know, Carol Kirkwood, who is there with John Keynes, who will tell us the weather. Carol, I got caught out last uh, yesterday in Luton, hence the hair. So fill us in. <laughs> you, Nikki, you look gorgeous as always, but the weather yesterday was quite beautiful, wasn't it? You can see the sky at the moon. Still quite a bit of cloud here at Mortlake, but the balloons are out, the bunting is out, the crown is out, the party started, we've even got some dogs. Archie and Ziggy, who are looking resplendent. Some of the dogs here have actually had their crowns on and their cravats, and they haven't got a drop of rain on them at all. Now, for many of us, we are starting off on a cloudy note, but if we take a look around the country, then you can see what it's going to do through the afternoon. So in Butte, the cloud could just be thick enough for the odd spot of drizzle, light winds, but in Mortlake, in Windsor, in Northampton, in Morecambe, the cloud should break through the afternoon and we should see some decent sunny skies. As we move over towards Enniskillen, here there's a bit more cloud around. Later we'll see a shower and then into the evening there's a good chance we will see some rain. So if you're outside, you might want to consider something undercover to continue your party. For Greenock and for Westray and Orkney, what you'll find is that we could also just see the odd shower. There'll be some brightness, some sunny intervals through the course of the afternoon. The showers will be fairly isolated. But temperature-wise, we're looking at 11 in Westray this afternoon. And as we come further south, well, we could reach 21, maybe 22 Celsius. That will make it the warmest day of this year so far. And if you are going to the concert in Windsor tonight, it's looking like it's going to stay dry for that. And if we come from a temperature of 21 or 22, it'll still be quite mild as we head on into the early part of this evening. So the weather here in Mortlake is looking pretty nice at the moment. But what is it like where Lorna Gordon is in Westbury? Actually, we're going to go to Tina next in Morecambe. Tina, has the sun come out for you yet? We may be. Um, food is a major element of, yeah. of any street party. Uh, so what, talk us through what we're seeing here. So we're seeing all sorts here. We've got uh, jam tarts. We've got salad. This lady Anne has even brought her own fruit salad in a cooler top. <laughs> Uh, this little lad has got crabs from the beach. Let's have a look. I've got a great recipe for crabs, but don't eat them just yet. He's got these little crabs, look. And this is a tiny one. They were already dead, I hasten to add. <laughs> they were dead, weren't they, already? Good, thank goodness for that. But of the, course, the quiche has gone down well. That was, that was full before. How much have you eaten? Oh, yeah, not much left. Did you make this, Anne? No. No? 
She's not made her own key. <laughs> <laughs> That's cheating, Anne. <laughs> cheating. But you can see like a sea of, of sandwiches and carbohydrates. If basically. you're wondering what that, that noise is uh, in the background, it's the RNLI. Uh, they are doing a life-saving demonstration of Orkham, of course, the largest expanse of sand in the UK. And uh, that's why they have a royally appointed guide here, because walking along these sands, the bay can be treacherous at times. Uh, so that's the RNLI uh, doing a little demo. Do you fancy a dip, John? I might go for a swim, give them somebody to save, you know. <laughs> They're doing a great job, aren't they? Right. Back, back, to food. back to the food. So jam tarts, I've not seen them for, since 1972. <laughs> they look lovely. But that's what's great about this, this kind of thing, is that it's not just about the people, it's about food. I mean, food and people are inextricably linked, aren't they? Yes. Food for us is culture. But what we're seeing here is people come together and bring in little bits and bobs, like a, a potluck or a hodgepodge supper. Yes, are they egg sandwiches? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah classic. Can oh, egg? Yeah. I've never seen them like that, you've just sliced your egg. There's a cake there, shaped like a... Union Jack. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of lovely bits. Are they? They're not mince pies, are they? <laughs> That's the wrong time of year for mince pies. But there's loads of those portable picnic foods. You know, yes. stuff that you'd eat either on a hotel room floor having a carpet picnic or at a big event like this. You know, there's lovely little bits that and define what we are. Yeah, as, as absolutely. Digital. And we've got to talk about um, the coronation quiche chosen by King Charles, of course. It's a perfect dish for a celebratory coronation party. The seagulls haven't you, taken it. The seagulls haven't taken it. I wonder if that's a good or a bad thing. They don't want it. Um, talk me through it. So yeah. He chose a quiche that was vegetarian, yeah. um, but it's not because in the pastry there's lard, so while the filling is vegetarian, the pastry itself contains lard. I haven't used and, that And recipe. that's a pork, that's made that's from pork. pig fat. Pig yeah, fat, rendered pig right. fat. So it's not very inclusive for, you know, uh, different communities who don't eat perhaps pork uh, fat, but I've made mine without. Um, but the quiche itself has got broad beans in there and the elusive tarragon, which I was up all night trying to find in the supermarkets. So you can't get it anyway, it's sold out. So it's a very curious... It's not the easiest ingredients to find, necessarily. Not really. I mean, broad beans are quite traditional, aren't they? You know, farmers. And I think this is a reference and a nod to Charles's love of agriculture, which is quite a lovely thing, isn't it? It's referenced his passion within a quiche. But in terms of the flavours itself, I'm not, that, I'm not a fan. You're I think not a fan. Do it better. And I'm supposed to be trying this thing and you're not really selling it to me. Well, well do you know what? If you want to if, if you want a mouthful, be my guest. I do want to taste I mean if I'm gonna taste anyone's quiche, it's going to be a quiche made by you. Um do you think we'll remember the coronation quiche in the same way we will, say, the coronation chicken? I think we might remember it in the same vein in which we remember Liz Truss and the lettuce. You know, it's okay. a bit of a bomb. It's not great. I think coronation chicken yeah. is brilliant, and I think that will be forever etched on the landscape of what it is to be Just British. Just going to have a nibble, because eating on TV is never great. Well, it's never glamorous, but we've got to do it. I've got a big broad bean here. That's actually really nice. Mm. It's not too bad. I might go in for a bit more later. Hang on. A bit more now. That's nice. I'm going to show you now. And I guess the, the benefits of quiche... <laughs> <laughs> the benefits, benefits of quiche. <laughs> We're actually talking about this. They are easy to make. Um, you can serve them hot or cold, relatively cheap. Yeah. Uh, but the people who aren't fans say, bit bland, bit boring. Well, That's not bad. it is a bit bland and a bit boring. I think they've tried to inject a bit of fun in this with the tarragon, but it's a bit too, for me, it's a bit too anisey. There's that kind of licorice flavour to it, which I yeah. think will be quite divisive, uh, especially here in Morecambe. We like our butties and our pork pies in Lancashire, I'm not going to lie, you know, <laughs> we don't like tarragon quiches, but it's all right, it's all right, okay. I've had better. Well,